What's up, I'm Vin, and today I wanna to show how to use exponent rules. So here are some rules that we're gonna need, and let's get started. So we'll take a look at a few examples, but we wanna express the following fraction in simplest form, and we're using only positive exponents. So for something like this, the first question, we could look at all the rules here, but notice what we have is, this is rule number four. We have a product being raised to a power. And when I go through examples like this, I still like to think about order of operations that I look for parentheses exponents first. So I'll show this one in a lot of steps, but the first thing we're doing is four to the third times t to the third, and let's make that neater. So this is t to the third over, and then we have two t to the third. So right away, before we start simplifying, I notice that t to the third is gonna cancel. And then what we could do here is we have four times four times four, which is 64, and 64 divided by two is 32. For all of these examples, we want to be mindful of order of operations. So the first thing that jumps out at me is parentheses exponents. So that's going to correspond to the sixth rule over here, that we have a to the negative 1 to the third power. So this starts off, we have 2 times a to the negative 1 times 3 makes negative 3. Don't fall into the trap of doing 2 to the third power, because this 2 is not inside the parentheses with the a to the negative 1. So now we have this over, we have negative 10 times a to the fifth. And now what we could do here is we could divide the top and bottom by two. Just know that the part with two over 10, two over 10 is technically equal to two over two times five. And I could put a times one on top and notice I'm left with one fifth. So I could cancel this out and make a one, cancel this and make a five. And now what we have is we have one on top and then we're gonna have a to the, and notice this rule here, rule number two, when we have a to the b divided by a to the c, we could write it as a to the b minus c. So I could say a to the negative three minus five like this, and we have over negative five on bottom. So just be mindful here that we did combine this one and this one using the second rule. So now from this step, what we're gonna do is just simplify. We've got a to the negative three minus five is negative eight over negative five, but the directions were to write everything in terms of positive exponents. So anytime you have a to a negative power, you could write it as one over a to a positive power. So that means we're gonna leave one on top and we have negative five on bottom and we could send the a down as a to the eighth power. That's gonna get rid of the negative eight by sending it down. So this we could write like this or we could even just say negative one over five a to the eighth and this is our solution to the second question. Now, a little side note, if that fifth rule is tricky for you, the one that I always show to get students to get it is I show an example like this, that if I had a to the negative three, b to the negative four over c to the negative five and d to the negative six, the way that I master this fifth rule is anytime I wanna change a negative exponent, I send it through the fraction. So notice the a to the negative three on top, we could send that down as a to the positive three. We can send this down as b to the positive four, and we can send this stuff on bottom up as c to the fifth and d to the sixth. So it's very important that we master this fifth rule. Okay, so this third example has a lot going on here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it step by step. We're gonna do order of operations. So the first thing I'm focusing on is the parentheses being raised to this exponent negative four. So we have 20a to the negative five, w to the minus eight over, and we have negative five on the outside because this is not in the parentheses. But now we have, we have a to the negative fifth to the negative four is gonna make a to the negative five times negative four is positive 20. And then we have w to the negative one times negative four makes positive four. So that brings us to this step. But now what we're gonna do is we could divide the top and bottom by five. If we do 20 divided by five, that's four. And then the negative five divided by five is one. And now, what we could do here is we're gonna group these two together. So we have a to the negative five divided by a to the 20. So we'll just go ahead and write this next line. We have four a to the negative five minus 20. And then we have w, so this is the next group, to the negative eight divided by w to the four is gonna give us w to the negative eight minus four like this. And all that's left on bottom now that we combine this is one but notice there's a negative one attached. So we'll just, we'll include the negative one in our denominator. But now to simplify this, four divided by negative one is negative four. So this is equal to negative four. And we have a to the negative 25. And then we have w to the negative 12. But if we want all positive exponents, just imagine this is over one. 
Now we could say this is negative 4 over, and we have a to the 25th and w to the 12th. So let's take a look at an alternate method real quick. Let's say we keep the 20 on top and the negative 5 is on bottom. But now instead of just leaving a to the 20, w to the 4 on bottom, let's say we take the negative exponents on top and send them down. So I send a to the negative 5 down as a to the 5th, and we send w to the negative 8 down as w to the 8. Now what we could do is we could multiply a to the 20 by a to the 5th, and also we could just say 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. So we could put our negative 4 on top over, and then we have a to the 20 times a to the 5 makes a to the 20 plus 5, which is a to the 25th. And then we'd have w to the 4 times w to the 8 is w to the 4 plus 8, which is w to the 12. So notice we get the same exact answer here. And this is one of the big themes of math is that there's more than one way to get from the question to the answer. So I encourage you to think creatively and try to find more than one way to solve these questions.